when your timer was installed, it had a climate logic that was connected to it. If you don't see a climate logic mounted next to the controller, then it's been mounted inside. And I have an additional one in here to show you that. Sometimes we mount them inside just because sometimes we don't need to drill extra holes into the stucco on the exterior of your home. So if you don't see a climate logic mounted next to the controller, then sure enough inside there'll be one connected. Well, here's a little better view on the inside. And usually it's stuck on here with uh, Velcro tape and double-sided tape. And it's just mounted inside. And the antenna has no problem communicating with the weather station from inside. For the purposes of this video, I have a clock, the climate logic, and the weather station mounted right next to it so that it's easy to see. Now changing the battery on the weather station. It's mounted and it's possible to leave it mounted. You give it a little twist there, open it up, and here the battery is on a little lead. Change out a standard 9 volt battery, tuck it back up in there, and line it back up. I'm going to try and show you a close up on the weather station. A little twist, open it up. The base has these little knobs. There's six of them, as you can see here by my finger. What you do to replace the top portion of the weather station, you line the hole with the antenna lead down into it. Then with those little knobs, there's little grooves in the top portion of the sensor. You line up those knobs and you give it a little twist. There, it's locked and you're good to go. Now, like I said, it is possible to do this while the bracket is still mounted to an E. But if need be, you can remove the screws, remove the whole weather station, and change the battery then. Now we're going to look at the climate logic by Eritrol. When your controller was installed, the climate logic was plugged in through this little jack and it's called a RJ11, which is a fancy word for the phone jack that plugs in and now a standard dumb controller becomes a smart weather-based controller. I'm going to attempt to show you the process we go through when we first install your climate logic. We will hit menu, the button that corresponded with menu. Let me show you that again, right here. Menu and this button here. Menu, it says clock. I'll hit enter, clock. Set up, I could do or get, I'll hit get. And it says get clock from controller. Yes, I've already set the time and day in the controller and now the climate logic corresponds with that into the timer. I'll hit exit. I'll come down, I'll hit location. I put in the zip code of where this controller is installed. If you have a zip, different zip code and you need to do this, it's simple. You go, here's what's flashing, the nine. I could change that, but everything here in California is gonna be a nine. I'll hit the next button. Two, change that again by hitting the up or down buttons. Hit the next button here and I can go through and I can save that zip code. Now once I put the zip code in, <clears throat> I will close it and I will insert an SD card into the bottom little location of the climate logic. The SD card has 40 years of history of weather based upon that zip code. It uses the 40 years of weather history in collaboration with the real-time data coming from the weather station to determine how long it should water tomorrow 
to replenish what was depleted today based upon real-time temperature and historical data. Now we inserted the SD card. I will come to location, the zip code, I'll hit save. See it says please wait, California said successful, that quick. It gathered the 40 years of history. Now if it loses communication with the weather station, it will rely upon the historical data from the SD card. Meaning, if it's January and the timer is set correctly with the time and date, it will know it should not be watering 100% in January. It will only be watering a percentage. And in January, I'm guessing maybe 20% of the maximum runtime that you've allowed this timer to run. Now I will remove the SD card. I will put it into its little case and it will go back into the base of the controller. Now in theory, once the climate logic has been programmed with the SD card, you should never need it again. But just in case you can see the Base plate of the controller opens up very easily and it's in here, tucked away in a safe location. Now let's continue. We've done the clock, we've done location, arrow down again, and we do go to setup. Here I'll hit enter. Here it says auto program adjust A. I'll hit down and it will go to B and C. The climate logic will now allow the timer on program A, B, and C to adjust according to the weather. I will hit next. Water restrictions. Currently, in most zip codes, we do not have any water restrictions imposed by the cities. So we'll have none. I'll hit next. Schedule update, 8 o'clock p.m. What that's telling us is that at 8 o'clock at night, it's going to tell the timer what percentage it should be watering based on today's temperature. 8 o'clock p.m. is good. I will hit next. Average percentage days. Normally, we do two days. So I'll average over two days. I'll hit next again. Freeze temperature, 39 degrees. What we do is we program it to 35, meaning if it gets 35 degrees or lower, when the controller is supposed to turn on, it will not turn on. So that therefore, anytime it gets cold like that, it just will not water. Hit next to go to the dry out days. Right now you can see 0.0. .0. If I hit the arrow up, we see 0.5. That means half a day, 12 hours. If it rains a quarter of an inch, it will go on a dry out of 12 hours. If I hit arrow up again, there's one full day. Again, 1.5 days, two days, two and a half, or three days is the maximum it will allow me to put a dry out. We usually set it for two days. Now we are done. I will hit save. And we've done the setup. I'll come down with the down arrow again to sensor. I'll hit enter. Add a sensor. I'll hit add. Now I will tap the top of the weather station. Successful. Sensor found. Now I will hit exit. And exit again. And that's all there is to setting the weather station to the climate logic. Syncing it once again. Here now I will hit exit. Here you can see it says no rain irrigation. That means it's not raining, it's in irrigation mode. 
it shows the temperature 68 degrees Fahrenheit and this hundred percent here shows that if it was to water right now it would water 100 percent of the minutes that we pre-programmed the controller for now remember at eight o'clock tonight it's going to look at how hot it got today and it's going to tell the timer what percentage it should water tomorrow to therefore replenish tomorrow what was depleted today through evapotranspiration which is a fancy word for the evaporation that was pulled through your plants now this hundred percent mark is going to change daily it is February 7th therefore it's only gonna water maybe 30 percent based on the temperature and the historical data for February so tomorrow if I come look at this it will probably say 30 percent therefore if I have station number one programmed for 10 minutes and it's watering 30 percent it would only water three minutes now also on this screen we see to the right of that hundred percent a bunch of little hash marks running horizontal that look kind of like the rungs of a ladder that is the battery strength in the weather station there's also another way to check the battery strength in the weather station that would be to hit menu hit the bottom down arrow button till I come to sensor see the arrow flashing next to sensor hit enter here I can view you see here it says view I'll hit the button corresponds with view and it's telling me the signal is strong the battery strength is at 9.1 volts that's a brand new battery the temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit so that's just another way to check the actual battery strength in the weather station here I'll hit exit and exit again and exit one more time and I'm back to the home screen now the home screen is easy to get to you can always just exit until you get to it see here it says exit but also if I just walked away closed it up after about five minutes it would be back to the home screen it will automatically revert back to the home or default screen now we see here in normal operation it will say no rain irrigation and it will show the temperature if the battery dies in the weather station it will show this now let's do a little troubleshooting I come to the climate logic and it says please check RF meaning it has lost communication with the weather station the radio frequency is the RF it shows here it is not displaying a temperature therefore something has happened and we need to resolve this problem now for the purpose of the illustration I removed the battery out of the weather station now I put the video on pause for a moment put a battery back into the weather station and it instantly grabbed the temperature and went back to normal operation it says no rain irrigation no longer says please check the radio frequency so a new battery I'm good to go if you put a new battery into the weather station and it doesn't instantly grab this wait a little bit give it some time if it doesn't after a while then hit the menu button come down to sensor hit enter I'm going to remove the sensor and you would show add a sensor so I'm going to add right now it says searching I'm going to tap the top of the weather station and see it says sensor found successful by exit and it also shows the ID I can just exit go back to the default screen or hit view there it shows my battery is at 9.1 uh, temperature is 74 the signal is strong of course it's strong I'm six inches away 
but even at 300 feet it will still show a strong signal so let me exit out of here back to the default screen and there we are we're all set and ready to go to normal operation once again let's say that you change the battery on the weather station and you go to the controller and it's flashing off for two that means you accidentally after replacing the battery tapped the top of the sensor which can put it into a rain delay and here we see off for two representing it's off for two days it's in a two-day rain delay now this is what I mean by tapping the top of the sensor let's say you put the new battery in but by accident you tapped that and you can feel it kind of depressing tapping this can put it into a two-day rain delay how to take care of that I'll show you on the climate logic now when it's rained a quarter of an inch this is what you will see the climate logic doing in a two-day rain delay but also this can happen by touching the top of that sensor after it's already synced back with the climate logic after replacing a battery this is what you'll see now as you can see the red light came on it came to rain and no irrigation it also says dry out remaining 48 hours meaning it's on a two-day suspend <clears throat> so you will see that 48 hours start to decrease but to get out of this all you have to do is hit the bypass button and see it went back to normal operation it says there's no rain it's in irrigation mode and there you go we're back and running after replacing the battery well that's all there is to changing the battery and setting up the climate logic if you needed to go through and reprogram everything also how to disable it from a two-day rain delay now we've covered all the features on the climate logic also one more thing I'd like to point out when it was installed you should have received the instruction manual this talks about the weather station and the climate logic and you also have one on the Toro TMC 424 controller they're really good instructions if you have questions refer to the owner's manual 